Okay, so today uh, we will be talking about the moment functional and orthogonality. And this section number uh, is based on the lecture notes available on the class webpage. So, <coughs> yeah, after each class, I will up, uh, I'll upload uh, what I write here, also with a link to a video. And I will also constantly update the lecture notes so you can check them uh, later. The lecture notes, I'm, it's not complete, of course. I'm, uh, during this semester, my plan is to uh, write uh, as much as possible there in the lecture notes. So it is still under uh, construction. So some of the sections later uh, will not be uh, very clearly written. So, but if you see those that I cover uh, each class, it should be uh, possible to read. Alright, so uh, let's begin. So from now on, we will consider a C K, a C, sorry, C X. This is the notation for a space or a ring, or let me just write space of uh, polynomials uh, in X uh, with coefficients in uh, the complex number C. So, so polynomials with complex number coefficients. And a linear functional a linear functional on Cx is just a map uh, say uh, L from C to C, uh, such that basically it's a linear transformation. So it satisfies the linear the axiom for the linear transformation of uh, G equals A F X B uh, L of G X uh, for all polynomials f and g in the space and for all constants, complex numbers a and b. Okay, so linear functional is really just a, a linear map from c x to c. And now uh, let me define this thing. Um, so let me just write it this way. Mu n, the sequence uh, with index n from is the non-negative integers. n is a non-negative integer. Uh, so a sequence of complex numbers. Complex number. And L is a linear functional. Linear functional. On, on C, of course. And, oh, so maybe it's, I, I should write this, uh, the linear functional. The linear functional uh, defined by, so because of the property, it's enough to define this for xn, x to the n. So if you define what L of x to the n is, then you know what this linear functional is. So this is defined to be just the nth element in your sequence there. Okay? So because of this property, this will determine the linear function. So and we say that in this case we say that L is the moment functional. moment functional uh, determined by the moment sequence. So mu n is called the moment of this linear functional, so we say it's a moment. And so linear functional and the, its moments, they determine each other. So if you have a linear functional, of course, the moments 
are given like this and vice versa. But I will, yeah, uh, this is what's written in Chiara's book, but I will often use just linear functional and the moments uh, will be given there. All right, and mu n is called the nth moment. of L, okay? Now, uh, now, let me define orthogonal polynomials, that's OPS. We define this in a you know, couple of ways, but we will do this again. So L is the linear functional, mm, linear functional, oh, sorry, is not B, but a, a linear functional. Cn, Cx, and uh, a sequence of polynomials. Yeah. I still have some more. Okay, so not a big deal. Uh, this is uh, is an OPS orthogonal polynomial sequence uh, or uh, OPS for short uh, with respect to R we actually define this but I'm just uh, doing this again if first uh, the degree of Pn is n of course for all n Second, L of PMX, PNX equals uh, KN delta MN, uh, where uh, KN is non zero for some, for some. If these two conditions uh, hold, then we say that uh, this sequence is an OPS for uh, L. All right, um, and this is really uh, the same as what we uh, call orthogonal vectors in a vector space, where we, the inner product is uh, defined like I uh, explained last week. So, and we also say this is orthonormal if in, in, uh, in addition, uh, this um, maybe yeah, I'm just, let's just keep the same order. If k n equals oh no, <laughs> uh, if delta m n. So in, in other words, uh, this is one. If this is one, then we also say it's orthonormal. Orthonormal usually means this. All right, so this is the definition, but we will see um, some equivalent conditions for a sequence of polynomials being an orthogonal polynomial sequence. Uh, okay, theorem. Uh, Pnx is a sequence of polynomials. Oh, by the way, uh, okay. Because this condition is always there, we will, from now on, we will assume that uh, this is always true. So from now on, maybe I can uh, copy this. Uh, from now on, we will always assume degree of p and x. Whenever we, we write p sub n x, then it's going to be a polynomial of degree n. This is, uh, this goes without saying, so I'm, I'm not going to repeat this all the time, so. so. Okay, so now let me uh, write down the theorem that I wanted to write. So this is a sequence of polynomials, and of course, uh, Pn has degree n. 
and L is uh, just a linear functional, linear functional. Then the following, the following are equivalent. So first, this sequence is an OPS for this linear functional. Okay. And second, uh, L of pi of x, p n x equals uh, zero if the degree of pi is less than n and non-zero if degree pi x equals n. I'm not saying uh, anything about the case when the degree is greater than n. I'm only uh, saying that these two hold, okay, for these two cases. And third, uh, li uh, linear functional applied to x to the m, p n x uh, equals uh, k n delta m n for m less than or equal to m and uh, for some k, non-zero k, k n. Okay, so these three are all equivalent. So this or this can be a nice criterion for uh, this to determine whether this is an OPS or not. So proof, let's uh, prove this. So let's uh, do this way. So one implies two. If this is an OPS, then why is uh, this zero? If this is n less than n, this is greater than uh, uh, equal to n. So, so suppose, because we are only considering a polynomial uh, whose degree is less than or equal to m, uh, n, so let's say the degree of pi uh, less than or equal to n, okay? Then we can say that we can write pi of x uh, in this way, say k from 0 to n, a uh, k p k x, right? We can write it this way because p n is as degree n, so it's a basis of the polynomial space. You can always write this. Actually, it's a unique, unique expression. And then uh, now I'm gonna apply, uh, or so let's compute what this is. So I'm just uh, substitute is there. So we have this big sum. Because of the linearity of this linear functional, it's going to be a k p k x p n x, right? Oh well, we can also uh, using the linearity, we can rewrite a k l of uh, p k x p n x. But we know from uh, the linear functional uh, because this is an OPS. This is zero uh, unless k equals n, right? So only one term survives when k equals n. So this is a n uh, l of p n squared, which I'll just write as like this, as k n non-zero, okay? But a n could also be zero because the, I, I didn't say that the degree is n. So degree is less than or equal to n, so a n will be zero if the degree is less than n. If the degree is less than n, this is zero, and if degree is equal to n, then this is non-zero. So this is uh, zero if the degree of pi less than n, and non-zero if degree equals n which is exactly uh, what we needed here. So that's, that's the proof in the one, one, one implies two, and uh, two implies three. Actually, uh, this, is, this is trivial. Oh, sorry, uh, this implies this. Because you can just take this to be uh, pi n. Just take, just take pi uh, x equals x to the m, then this will, it will be done. So that's it, so easy. 
and 3 implies 1 is also quite easy. So it's also easy. You can do it. Uh, I'll omit it. Yeah. You can do it similarly as I did over here. So just try to do it yourself uh, at a class, maybe. All right, so now we have uh, these uh, equivalent conditions, and we have another nice theorem about orthogonal polynomials. Suppose that P and X is an OPS for a linear functional L, um, then and and SA pi is a polynomial of degree, say, n. Okay? So we have an orthogonal polynomial, a sequence of orthogonal polynomials, and we have a given polynomial of degree n. Then, of course, we can write pi n, uh, just like I wrote there, a k p k. This is always true, but what the theorem says is this AK can be computed uh, um, pi x pkx pkx squared. Okay? We can immediately get this coefficient if you know that this is an OPS for L. And the proof is really uh, elementary that you can easily see in you know, any linear algebra course. So if you remember, if you have a linear uh, uh, basis or any uh, linearly independent set which is orthogonal, then you can always write a vector in that span as a linear sum of these uh, orthogonal vectors and then you know exactly how to write down the coefficient using the orthogonality. So, so the idea is, so just write uh, this, this is always possible. So how can you determine this AK? So the idea is multiply both sides I mean this by uh, let's say P, P J X and take linear functional and see what happens. So linear functional pi x P J X equals and because of the linearity, we can write this way. We can always uh, write this way, pkx, pjx, right? But we know this is zero unless these two indices are equal. So only one term survives. So it's aj, l of pjx uh, squared. So if you divide both sides, then you know we get the desired formula, right? The denominator is non-zero because this is by orthogonal orthogonal polynomial is non-zero, so this is possible. So this is the same, only the index is different. So that's the proof. So all polynomials are nice in this in this sense. Okay, so what else do we can we talk about? Can we say about these orthogonal polynomials? Yeah. Again, uh, P and X OPS for a uh, linear functional. Then uh, this polynomial each polynomial is uniquely determined by this linear functional L up to a, a non-zero multiplic scalar multiplication. Non-zero scalar multiplication. That means this must be something uh, if Okay, well, okay, let me, let me write this more precisely, more precisely. 
if QNX is also an OPS uh, for L, then this QNX must be a PNX with some common, I'm oh, sorry, uh, with some non zero multiple CN for some uh, CN uh, non zero. Of course, it's a complex number. This is uh, what we usually mean in, in, in mathematics is up, determined up to scalar multiplication, non-zero scalar multiplication. Okay, uh, proof is not that hard. So let's write uh, this way. So we are assuming this, so the degree is n, so we can write this as uh, k from 0 to n, let's say c, c, k, p, k, x. This is always possible. And then, uh, then c, k, we, we know how to find the c, k. Because this is an orthogonal, orthogonal polynomial, we multiply both sides p, k, and then take the linear functional so that this will be uh, p, k, x, q, n, x over uh, pkx square. Okay. But if you look at this, uh, so what do we want to know? What do, we, what do we want to show? We want to show that this is in fact c and p n, right? That means ck will be zero unless k equals n. But we, this is actually zero uh, okay. Zero if k is less than n. Why? Because p uh, qn is also an OPS. We have an OPS. Any polynomial whose degree is less than n will be zero. That's the theorem that we showed. Uh, where is it? Here, right? So this is zero by the theorem. And non-zero if k equals n. That means C, Cn is non-zero in particular. And so Qn, all the terms disappear <coughs> except the last term, which is this. So that's the proof. So in other words, if you have an orthogonal polynomial, if you divide each polynomial by any or divide or multiply any uh, scalar, non-zero scalar, the result will also be an orthogonal polynomial. So you can make your, your orthogonal polynomials, you have some freedom to make your orthogonal polynomials, right? By multiply, uh, up to multiplication. So uh, we have a natural choice, right? Like a monic, we can just choose to be a monic. So um, what I'm saying is, not if uh, Pn x is OPS, for uh, L, then Cn Pnx is also OPS for L, where of course Cn is non-zero. Because you can check that this also satisfies the orthogonality, because this doesn't really uh, play any role when you compute uh, the linear functional, right? So you can always pull this out. So. That means you can always make uh, this polynomial uh, monic. You can, you can always make, uh, okay, maybe we'll find a, a monic OPS. Monic means uh, leading term is one. Leading coefficient. Like x to the uh, x three uh, a x square or something like that, and actually it, it must be unique, right? Two of uh, it's actually it's a unique. This is unique, or uh, maybe maybe just not right. In fact, there is a unique monic OPS. 
Okay. Also, if you want, there is a unique orthonormal OPS. Because you have a, once you have an orthogonal basis, just remember, just recall in linear algebra, once you have an orthonormal basis, you can, oh sorry, orthogonal basis, you can always normalize it to get an orthonormal basis. And that will be unique because the two vectors are constant scalar multiple, but they have the same sign, they must be the same. Up to sign, <laughs> I think, up to sign for orthonormal. Uh, maybe I, yeah. Oh, yeah. Thankfully, I didn't mention oh, <laughs> unique here, so. By uh, dividing, by letting Pn maybe hat. So Pnx, we just divided by its length. But what is the length? It's going to be uh, Pnx. But in, in, this, in this course, we will not worry much about orthogonal, orthogonal, orthonormal basis, but we will be mostly dealing with uh, monic OPS because that's kind of uh, useful or standard in the combinatorial theory of orthogonal polynomials. Okay, so let me write this, let me summarize this using a uh, corollary. Mm, suppose that L is a linear functional, 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 with, with uh, OPS, some OPS. So OPS exists for this L, okay? And let KN uh, non-zero sequence. Uh, P, uh, okay, but let, me, let me write it in, in, our, in our notation. Be a sequence of non-zero numbers. Then we have the following. Um, there is a unique, actually this is what I, I just write over there. Monic OPS. Uh, and there is unique OPS, say Pn x uh, for L, such that the leading term, leading coefficient, the leading coefficient so you can make this leading coefficient to be anything you want, just because you can always multiply something. And third, uh, there is a unique OPS. Oh yeah. Of uh, for for L such that uh, x to the n p n x is something that you want. You can make this to be anything, or if you want, maybe have four where this uh, squared equals k n. Maybe I should write, uh, oh yeah, I, I think it's okay, yeah, I think it's okay. Yeah. Now P squared, we have to worry about this uh, positivity, so yeah, I'm not gonna mention that. <clears throat> okay, um, or maybe I, I, have, I have to mention one more thing. Okay, maybe I think I can write that down over here. Note, if Pn, so, so far we, we have considering, we have considered how to modify the orthogonal polynomials once the linear functional is fixed. But we can also uh, change the linear functional a little bit. If this is OPS for L, then it is 
also an OPS for L prime, which is defined to be L times C, where C is a non-zero constant. Okay? Because think about the orthogonality, it's just uh, we only care about whether this linear functional is zero or not at given uh, polynomial. So we may assume that L of 1 is 1. Because otherwise, you can divide this by L of 1 so that you can make it to be 1. So again, oftentimes, we will assume this. But that's always uh, possible. OK, now. Um, Let's move on to the next section. Uh, existence of OPS. So the main question is, um, for what a linear functional L mm, does there uh, exist OPS? So obviously, if you define your linear functional, you know, um, not very carefully, then there will, there won't be any orthogonal, polyno polyno orthogonal polynomials for that um, linear function. For instance, just imagine that you define to be just zero always. Then it cannot be on, there cannot be any orthogonal polynomials for this. So, and to answer this question, we have to uh, define this. Uh, Notion, the Henkel determinant determinant right. the Henkel determinant of a moment sequence. Moment sequence means just a sequence of numbers. Yeah, that's it. Is uh, we will denote this by delta n, capital delta n, this determinant of mu i plus j, where i j from 0 to n. So this is the determinant. Or uh, we can, if you want to look at the pattern in the matrix, it's going to be mu 0, mu 1, dot, 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 mu n. This is a determinant mu1, mu2, mu n plus 1, and the last row looks like mu n plus 1, mu n plus 2, dot, 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 mu 2 n. So it looks something like this. So this is a Henkel determinant. So it's a, just a, a value that you can compute. And there's a nice theorem. Um, so L is a linear functional. Linear functional. Fun Let me functional uh, with. Uh, uh, ah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Very good question or very good uh, correction. So yeah. Sorry. N, N plus 1 by N plus 1 matrix, right? Thank you for the correction. So L is a linear functional with moment sequence, uh, say, um, mu N, OK? Then, or maybe, OK, then there is an OPS for L, if and only if, this is a nice condition, if and only if, delta n non-zero for all n. So the criterion is really simple. You all, all you need to check is just the determinant. If the determinants are, Henkel determinants are all non-zero, there will be an orthogonal polynomial for L and vice versa. Okay, so how can we prove this? 
proof. Let's uh, do the proof. Okay, to do this, let's fix a sequence of non-zero numbers. Non-zero numbers. Kn. And uh, n greater than or equal to zero. Okay. Or k n, you can just say k n equals one. That's, that doesn't matter. Any any non-zero uh, numbers. Um, and and we know that if because of this, if there is an OPS, then it is unique. If you have if you add this condition. Right? If we add one more condition there, then orthogonal polynomials, the sequence is uniquely determined by this. Okay? So by the previous corollary, um, if there is an OPS for L, there is a unique PN uh, such that Unique OPS, maybe I have, I have to, unique OPS, OPS for L, such that we have additional condition that x to the uh, n p n x equals k n, right? Now this is why I wanted to uh, fix this. And what we are going to do is to find uh, this polynomial because we have conditions. Of the, of the orthogonal orthogonality, we have a bunch of equations, and we will solve these equations. Uh, or uh, let me let me maybe I can combine them together. Maybe I can write this way. If I write m here, then it's going to be delta m n for all uh, zero less than m less than n, right? So we want to find the p n satisfying this. So, okay, let, because we want to find what this Pn is, we will write this as just a polynomial of degree n. So it will be written something uh, like this. So k from 0 to n, c and k, x to the n. And our goal is to find these numbers. Okay? And the technique is similar to what we have done so far. So multiply xn, uh, xk, uh, sorry, xm, both sides, and take L, linear function, and see what happens. Then we have, the, have an equation like pnx, equals summation k from 0 to n c and k uh, l of x n plus x to the n plus k but what is this the moment functional uh, the moment sequence is given so this is really uh, the moment n plus k moment so I can replace this by uh, mu m plus k, right? And we want this to be what? Uh, k n delta m n. So we want to find uh, solutions to this. So we want want to find c and k. These numbers such that uh, this holds. If we can find such, uh, such array, C and K, then there is an orthogonal polynomial. Otherwise, there is no orthogonal polynomial because you cannot find solutions there. But we can rewrite this equation uh, in this way. Um, mu 0, mu 1, or oh, maybe I can just copy this and paste it so that I, can, so that I don't make any mistake. <laughs> Now it's going to be a matrix. C, uh, N0, C, N1, 
CNN, this is equal to uh, 0, 0, dot, 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 0, and KN. Because if you look at mth, mth the, uh, okay, how can I say? Uh, so think about m. This is this times this. If you think about the matrix multiplication, this is exactly the uh, uh, mth entry of the resulting vector, which is this over here. So it's, it's going to be 0 if m is less than n. And it will be kn if n is m is equal to n. So this is really the same as this. So if we can find a solution to this equation, then there will be an orthogonal polynomial, and otherwise no. But when when do we have a solution to this, a unique solution to this, if the matrix has a non-zero determinant? Okay. Right? So there is unique solution. Yeah, unique solution. I mean, in C and K, if and only if this Henkel determinant is non-zero. And that's basically the proof. That's the proof for all n, because we want to find for Pn for all, every n. So that's the proof. And actually, uh, if you look at this um, formula carefully, then you can in fact determine the C and K, right? How can you solve this, such an equation, AX equals B? If you remember Kramer's rule, we can uh, compute this. So note, if we can use, we can solve the uh, matrix equation using Kramer's rule. Do you remember Kramer's rule? So you, if you want to get like uh, mth entry here, say xm, if you say this is m, x, you replace uh, mth column with uh, this. And then you take the determinant of this matrix and divide it by the original matrix, the determinant of the original matrix. So for, in particular, uh, CNN, the leading term, what is the leading term? Uh, leading term is going to be, uh, you replace this by this. Oh, I think I have to mention this in the proof too. Yeah, okay. Sorry, uh, I think uh, we, a proof is not done. Because we have to check that Pn has degree n, right? So to do this, yeah, maybe proof uh, completes here. Cn, using the Kramer's rule, uh, you replace this column by this, the 0, 0, 0, Kn. So the determinant will be uh, this determinant times this. So it's going to be Kn. The same determinant, the same Henkel determinant with one a size uh, decreased by one, so delta n minus one, and the original determinant is the Henkel determinant. And this is non-zero, so so p n has degree, so p n has degree n, if the solution exists. Uh, if a solution exists, so that's the uh, actually that's the end of the proof. And in fact, uh, you can compute any uh, coefficient in this way. Any coefficient in this way. Mm. Okay, but let me write down a lemma that uh, will be useful later. So, so OPS for L and in pi x as degree n, then L, if you 
um, do this it's going to be a b delta n uh, oh minus one I think delta n oh sorry minus one where uh, a is the leading coefficient of pi and b is the leading coefficient of p so in particular Uh, if this is monic, then uh, uh, it's this will be uh, delta n over delta n minus one. Proof is really uh, this. If, because we can compute this, uh, you can just uh, get it. But let me. Yeah. Proof. Let's, let's do this. Uh, we know. Uh, we know from proof of uh, previous theorem. Using, using the same notation there, um, the coefficient of b, got the coefficient of pn, which is, which we write b here, is a cnn. Uh, we computed this, and this, uh, this is kn delta n minus 1 uh, delta n. So if we write uh, pi x as, uh, as usual, like this, the degree n, so uh, 0 to n. Then, of course, uh, ak is a, the leading coefficient, oh, sorry, an is a. Now, just the computation. Summation k from 0 to n, ak, l of x to the k, p and k, and we know by the orthogonality, this will be uh, 0 unless k is equal to n. So that will be uh, a n l of l of uh, x to the n p n. But we denoted this by k n, so a n k n. So now you use this. If you, if you do the computation, then you get the result. a b delta n delta n minus 1. That's the proof. No, just so because of this, we know here Kn equals B uh, delta N over delta M S 1. So I just substitute uh, this here. fine. This lemma will be used later, uh, once or twice. Um, yeah, uh, like I said, we can in fact compute every coefficient of pn using this. And using that idea, we can compute, we can write down explicit formula for the polynomial pn. Uh, that's the theorem right here. And there is a very nice um, Theorem, so it's a linear functional, linear functional, uh, functional with moment sequence like that. And suppose the Henkel determinant is non zero for all n. Then we know that there is an orthogonal polynomial sequence for n. <coughs> then we know the unique, there is a unique monic orthogonal polynomial. So the, the monic OPS for L is uh, computed like this. PNX equals determinant of uh, 
Let's see if I still have that. Oh yeah, I still have that. So here I replace the last row by uh, because I want to compare with the previous row. Let me write this way. Uh, maybe minus one and then one x dot 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 x to the n determinant of this. And because of the monic, we have to divide this by 1 over delta n minus 1. Because the coefficient of x to the n will be uh, this, so we have to divide this by this to get a monic polynomial. And this can be seen because, you know, what is the coefficient of x to the n? x to the m, so you take this in the determinant, you um, remove this and this, and you have to compute this determinant, but that's exactly uh, what you do over here. That's one way of proving this using just a, a, a linear equations. Also, um, so this can be done by uh, using, using Kramer's rules. And also, I, I'm going to show you an alternative proof because that's quite uh, interesting. Alternatively, uh, we, all we need to show is uh, that uh, these polynomials satisfy, uh, where is it? This, right? If you can show this, it, it'll be an orthogonal polynomial. And monic is unique, so we know it's, it's, it, it must be that. So we will show this uh, is uh, sufficient to show orthogonality or the equivalence of the orthogonality. Uh, or delta m m n say uh, k n k n non zero. Uh, m less than or equal to m, n, right? But why is this true? We have this. See what happens. This is equal to L of, we have big, uh, oh, I'm not going to write that down, but just imagine that we take this, multiply it x to the m, right? But if you multiply x to the m here, then, uh, what is that? What is that called? Uh, Multilinearity of the determinant. You can multiply this to each entry in a particular row. You fix one row and then you can multiply this everywhere there. So this is nothing but L of 1 over delta n minus 1. The same thing, x to the m plus, uh, x to the m plus 1, da, 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 like that. So the last row becomes uh, this. But again, this is a linear functional, and determinant has this multilinearity. So this only applies to uh, x to the something. So because these are all constants. So this, you can put this inside over there. So this gets changed into, still now in the, inside the determinant. This is the same thing, same thing here, but the last row becomes mu m, mu m plus 1, da, da, da. But see, this is, imagine this matrix where this last row becomes mu m, mu m plus 1. Da, da, da. So if m is less than n, you see exact same row somewhere over here. So we have the same two rows equal, the determinant will be 0 if, uh, so this is 0 if m less than n, because we have two, two identical rows. And non-zero, actually it's non-zero and we know, oh, maybe, maybe I should write this way. Delta, so if this is n, this is exactly the Henkel determinant, so it's delta n over delta n minus one, which is non-zero, if m equals n. So this is exactly uh, what the orthogonal, what this is saying. So that's why uh, this is true and that's why it's an orthogonal polynomial, so the morning is unique, so this is, this is it.
So yeah, it's nice. It's nice that we have an explicitly written formula for Pn, the monic Pn. Okay, uh, let me tell you a little bit about uh, the weight function of uh, orthogonal polynomial. So, like I said, we will uh, mostly focus on combinatorics, so we will not uh, consider the weight function or a linear function that often, but <coughs> I think it's worth mentioning. So, um, in many cases, when we consider like classical orthogonal polynomials, so so far we only have like linear functional. If you know the uh, uh, moment sequence, then you can define um, linear functional using the moment sequence. So there is not we don't have anything about like integral or the weight function there, but we can still uh, talk about the moment uh, linear functional uh, written as an uh, integral. So in many cases, um, there is a weight function or measure of weight function, Wx, such that the linear functional is really, maybe just like x to the n, let me write x to the n because that's enough. Uh, something like, I don't know, ab, x to the n, wx, dx. Like we saw earlier for the Chebyshev polynomials, and more generally, more generally, uh, there is not always. Sometimes there is um, a measure, positive measure. Um, how can I say? Um, such that phi non-decreasing mm. yeah, I'm not going to tell you the details, let me just say non-decreasing It's not, what I'm saying is not completely accurate but I'm going to tell you just the idea uh, L of x to the n is written uh, by something like this. L of n, uh, this Riemann steel chess integral. So the idea is, in many cases, you know, especially for classical orthogonal polynomials, we can find at least some non-decreasing measure with like infinite support satisfying this. So we can write explicit uh, integral like for this linear function. Sometimes it's helpful because you know how to, if you know how to compute this integral. Um, what's known fact is, fact is that uh, such an expression exists. If and only if, this is a if and only if condition, if and only if, L of pi x is positive for a every um, polynomial pi x such that it has uh, for all x, re real number x, but of course uh, non not identically zero. So for every non not identically zero uh, polynomial whose value at every real number is non-negative, then this must be positive. If that condition holds, then there is a measure uh, like this. That's a, a known fact in um, classical orthogonal polynomial theory. Okay. So of course we are not going to prove this here, but this condition uh, is important. So there is a name for it. So let me define this. A linear functional L is a positive definite positive definite if this condition holds. If uh, let's say uh, this star 
if star holds. And if uh, the fact, if L is positive definite, positive definite, then there is a real OPS for L. Real OPS means polynomial with real coefficient. Okay. Oh, actually, uh, it's not a fact. Uh, it is a fact, but it's a theorem for us. We will prove this. Yeah. Okay, let's prove this. Uh, not sure I have enough time for this, but I think yeah, I think it's okay. So, we have a linear functional, which is positive definite, okay, satisfying this condition. We want to show that there is a real OPS. But, you know, do you, can you uh, guess how the proof uh, looks? First, we have to show that there is an orthogonal polynomial. So how can you show this? We know an if and only if condition, so we, we need to show this, right, at some point. Uh, so, but we have to show that the real o o OPS, so we have a formula, something like this. So if we can show that all of these are real, then maybe that will be very helpful. So first we will show that the moments are real. So first, uh, let's show, let's prove uh, moments. It's real because that will be helpful. Um, first of all, since L is positive definite, the even moment must be uh, mu two n is the even moment. It will be positive. Okay, because this is a polynomial satisfying this, right? It's always non-negative for every real number and it's not identically zero so it must be positive because that's the definition of a positive definite linear function this is okay but what about uh, 2n plus 1 this obviously is uh, we cannot use this but uh, but if you consider x plus 1 to the 2n let's say this is still positive of course right we cannot say that mu 2n minus 1 is positive, but we, from this, we can say that this is real. Because by induction, imagine that you expand this using binomial theorem, like 2n, like choose k, x to the k, right? And then you take the linear functional, this becomes a, a moment, right? And then we can show from, uh, by induction, mu 1 is real, and then mu 3 is real, etc. Then here, the only term that survives, that, that has not been uh, proved, is 2n minus 1. But this, is, uh, this will be written as a sum of real numbers, so it will be real. So this, is, this can be done like that. So all the moments are real. Is this OK? So by induction. Okay, so now we will construct just the OPS. So let's let's now construct uh, OPS. A real OPS. Yeah. We just Real, uh, real coefficient. And suppose, uh, so of course, first we will just uh, let this to be one. This is, we can just fix uh, first our zero polynomial. And suppose by induction, 
p zero x dot 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 let's say a pn uh, have been constructed. Of course, these are all in uh, all in R n R x real polynomials. And we will see how we can find the next polynomial. But by this, I mean uh, these are orthogonal to each other, right? They are orthogonal to each other. So we want to find another orthogonal polynomial. So this, this means uh, this means. Oh, sorry. Pi. Let me uh, just write this way. Uh, zero unless i less than j. Uh, I, I, I different from j for i j less than n. Okay. So suppose that we have constructed a real uh, sequence of orthogonal polynomials up to n polynomial, and see how we can construct the next polynomial. So uh, we need to find. Uh, so let because we want to find the next polynomial, let's say pnx equals uh, monic, we can just uh, assume that it's monic. So it's k from 0 to n, ak, pk. Okay. And see if we can determine these numbers, ak. All right, uh, then, so we want, what, L of, P, uh, M, P, N plus 1 equals 0 if M is uh, less than or equal to N, right? We want to have this condition. So multiply, uh, the, we use this technique like over and over, x to the, uh, oh sorry, P, P, sub, P sub M, and take L over here, let's say star, and see what happens. Then we get L of uh, PK X, oh sorry, PM, PN plus one. So L of, uh, x to the n plus 1, pmx, plus, so we have pm multiplied here. And if you take the linear functional, we know that these up to n, they are all orthogonal, so only uh, one term survives. So am, pm, X is K. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. Mm, right. So what do we want to know is AM. We can find AM because this is just a uh, equation, solving the equation. Uh, let's uh, uh, omit XN. Uh, bracket x, pm, pn plus 1, uh, plus l of, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, wait, wait a second. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah. No, no, no. I, uh, so what do we want is, we want this to be 0. Uh, that's why we want it. So I'm not going to solve this. So we want this to be zero, but we can do this by d defining this to be this divided by this, right? So this, this will be zero if am equals L of x n plus one pm over L of pm scale. So meaning that we can determine AM so that this is, uh, this also satisfies the recurrence relate, I'm oh, sorry, the orthogonality. And also everything 
Uh, th these are all real, right? Because m is less than m. It's already real. So it's a real. And this will be a linear, linear sum of real function, a real number. So eventually, uh, this will also be real. So we set this to be this, and that, that's basically it. So in this way, so by, uh, by setting, defining AM in this way, uh, we get PM plus one, still a real polynomial, and <coughs> P0 up to, oh sorry, it's going to be uh, Pn, uh, real OPS. So by induction, we can find all the polynomials. At the end. So we are done by induction. question so far about the proof or anything okay then uh, I'll stop here and continue the next time